Here's an example where we're asked to find the area of a region bounded by uh, the graphs of two equations that are written now uh, in terms of y. So x equals 4 minus y squared and x equals y minus 2. So make sure you pay careful attention to the fact that this is not y equals x minus 2. So it's going the other way around. Um, so the first thing we would want to do is get a sketch of this region. We, we need to have at least a rough idea of what this region looks like. It's noteworthy here that x and y are both to the first power in that equation. And so uh, we know that the graph is a line. If we want to graph a line, we really just need two points. Uh, two points will determine the graph of a line. So if we just find any two xy pairs that satisfy this equation, that'd be one way to graph this line. Another way would be to solve it for y, um, which is easy enough as well. Uh, and in fact, you know, now that I say that out loud, why don't we just do that? So if you add two to both sides of this equation, then you'll have x plus two equals y, right? That's an equivalent equation. Um, and so that is written in your good old mx plus b form, where your slope is one, like it was in the last uh, example video. This time the y-intercept is positive two. So y-intercept at positive two, put a few more hash marks on here. Uh, y-intercept at positive two, slope is positive one. So we go up one over one. Ooh, I hope I left enough room. I, I do make that mistake frequently, up one over one. Uh, I'm gonna go back one and down one. Okay, so I have it uh, hitting the x-axis at negative two, which you could verify real quick. Okay, so if x is negative two, yeah, y would be zero. That would satisfy the, that equation. Okay, maybe I'll do one more point here and then I'm gonna draw the line. Ah, okay. So there's the line uh, corresponding to this equation here. Uh, now for this other equation. Um, notice, okay, so if this were the other way around, if this were y equals four minus x squared, then that would be, let's just write this down real quick. If it was this, equation, so reversing the x and the y. That's a parabola because of the degree two, tells us that. Uh, the negative in front of the x squared tells us that it opens downward. And the four right here tells us, okay, so that's gonna pull the vertex, instead of having a vertex at zero, zero, it's gonna pull it up four. And, and so maybe if you remember some of your uh, graphing uh, techniques from algebra or pre-calculus, uh, you'd be able to reason that, okay, so the graph for that equation would look something like this. If it's the other way around, so it's a quadratic equation in terms of y, the graph will be a parabola, but this time it's gonna open side to side. Let me get the marker out of my hand. It's gonna open like this or like this. Uh, so instead of up and down, like a U opening either up or down, it's gonna be a U opening either to the left or to the right. Um, the negative in front of the y squared tells us it opens in the negative direction. So think of it that way. Like when you have a negative in front of your x squared, it opens downward. Think of it as opening in the negative direction. So when it's y squared, it opens in the negative direction. That's going to be this way towards the negative values of x. So it opens that way. And then the 4 is going to shift it over 4. So you'll wind up with a graph with a vertex at 4, 0, which, by the way, you could verify by plugging in, let's see, so if x is 4, y would be 0. That makes sense. Um, and opening this way. Um, another thing, just eyeballing this, notice that if y is 2, then x would be 0. So when x is 0, you're going to get either y equals 2 or if y equals negative 2. Because again, when you square, you'll get 4. You'll have 4 minus 4 here, so x is 0. So it's got um, these y-intercepts at positive and negative 2 graph looks like this. Okay, so now we've got a rough idea. The, so the region that we're finding so area, be... sorry for the background noise. Um, I can pause, hang on. Okay, so we're finding area of this region here. Um, so already just by happenstance, we know that this point of intersection occurs at 0, 2. 
uh, we don't know where this point of intersection occurs. And we need to know what the coordinates are here so that we can set up the correct limits of integration when you set up the definite integral that gives the area. Um, so we're in this position again where we want to find uh, a point of intersection. And so to find that point of intersection, uh, notice here that these are both solved for x. So we could do that same old substitution that I did in the last video, substitute this y minus 2 in place of x here, y minus 2 equals 4 minus y squared. And I would again uh, probably move everything to one side. Uh, I prefer to solve with the uh, leading term positive. So I'd like to have the y squared positive, so I'm going to move everything to the left side this time. I'm going to do plus y squared minus 4. So plus y squared minus 4 to both sides. So that's going to give me y squared uh, positive y and then negative 2 minus 4, so minus 6 equals, when you combine like terms over here, you've got 0 and then the y squareds cancel, so just zero here. Okay, so now we're solving a quadratic equation. We want to find two numbers whose product is negative six and the sum is positive one. So that'll be positive three and negative two. This is in terms of y. So those are your factors. Set each factor equal to zero, you'll have y equals two and y equals negative three. Um, and my dog is on red alert right now. So just fair warning, you may get a bark in the background sometime soon. Hopefully not, but he's seeming a bit, um, I don't know the word right now. Anyway, uh, I'll keep you on your toes. Okay, so points of intersection occur when y equals two, which is actually old news, we knew that, and when y equals negative three. So it turns out the uh, y coordinate for this point of intersection is negative three. If we want to find the x coordinate, we can plug negative three into either one of these equations. Should get the same x either way. Let's see, if, if y is negative three, this equation gives us x is negative five. And just to double check, if y is negative three, plug it into this equation, you'll have nine here. Four minus nine is negative five. So yes, uh, that x, y pair satisfies both equations. So there's your point of intersection. So we've got the graph. Phase one is complete. Pause and uh, pat yourself on the back for that. But, okay, we want to find area of this region. So I've got something to discuss here. If we do upper curve minus lower curve, that can be done. That, that's one way to find the area. I integrate upper curve minus lower curve. Uh, there's a catch if we're going to look at it that way. So upper curve minus lower curve, we'd have the blue, which is the y minus two. Upper curve minus lower curve, we'd have the line on top minus the parabola on the bottom until you get to when x equals zero. And then over here, you've got the parabola on the top and the bottom. So you can, there is a way to do that. You could solve uh, both of these equations for y, set up your expressions of x, do top minus bottom. The catch, if you do it that way in terms of x, you're gonna have one integral as x goes from negative five to zero of the upper curve, which is this line, which it, we would have to solve this for y, which would be easy enough, we already did it once, it's x plus two, minus the lower curve, which would be this if you solve it for y, which would be the square root, actually it'll be the negative square root of four minus x. I'm gonna avoid getting into the details of that. Um, but suffice it to say, so it'd be the line minus the parabola, but then you would have to do, and this is integrated with respect to x, then you would have to do plus the integral as x goes from zero, from zero to four here of, and you'd have to do, um, it's going to be the positive root of four minus x minus the negative root of four minus x. You'd have to write two separate equations when you solve for y here, because it's the old, once you take the square root of both sides, you put that plus or minus in front when you solve. Okay, so you could do it that way. 
Um, but in terms of computation time, it, it takes a lot longer to evaluate the area if you do it this way. There's a better way to do it. So instead, instead of upper minus lower, another way to find area is to do the integral, I'm gonna say from A to B, of right-hand curve minus left-hand curve. So instead of top minus bottom, we're gonna do right minus left integrated with respect to Y. That's another way to do these. So instead of, if you can picture back uh, to the Riemann sums that you worked on in Cal 1, um, instead of slicing it this way and writing an integral in terms of X, suppose we approximated the area using a bunch of rectangles slicing it this way. So now the width of each of these rectangles the thin little width of each rectangle is an increment of y. So this is gonna be an integral in terms of y. That's why I put dy here instead of dx. Whenever you are slicing your region horizontally, so you're looking at it as right minus left instead of top minus bottom, you need to write it as an integral in terms of y, which is what we should do here. So in this case, the area of the region is equal to the integral. So everything's gonna be in terms of y. So limits of integration, we want the lowest y and the highest y corresponding to this region. So the lowest y corresponding to this region is negative three. So I'm gonna put that here. And the highest y corresponding to this region is positive two. And I'm sorry for the noise in the background. The, the room that I used to work in at home is not like a closed off room, unfortunately. Okay, anyway, so lowest y corresponding to this region is negative three. I'm getting that from my points of intersection. Highest y in this region is positive two up here. We're, we're gonna integrate from negative three to two of right-hand curve, which is this, four minus y squared, minus left-hand curve, which the left-hand curve is this one. So it's the y minus two, dy. Okay, so instead of writing it as a sum of two integrals, integrating, you know, looking as top minus bottom, going negative five to zero plus integral zero to four. We can do it all at once if we do right minus left. We can handle it all in one integral because it's consistent when you do right to left. The, the red curve is always on the right everywhere in this region. The blue curve is always on the left. If you're looking at top minus bottom, it's, it, it's not consistent. You have the blue on top over here, but once you get to the other side of the y-axis, you've got the red on top. So that's why you have to do a sum of two different integrals in that case. But if we go in terms of y, right minus left, it is consistent. The boundaries are consistent, right hand, left hand. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna crank out the uh, actual area here. So first combine like terms inside the brackets here. So this is the integral from negative three to two of four. If I distribute the negative here, this will become plus two. So that'll be six minus y squared minus y. Right, dy. So the antiderivative of a constant will be that constant times y, since that's our variable of integration. So 6y minus, for y squared, antiderivative will be y cubed over 3 minus antiderivative of y is y squared over 2. This is evaluated from negative 3 to 2. So this is, if we plug in 2, 6 times 2, minus two cubed over three, minus two squared, which is four over two, so that'll be two, minus six times negative three. Uh, let's see, negative three cubed will be negative 27, divided by three will be negative nine, and then when you apply this negative, that will make it a positive nine. And then here, negative three squared will be nine over two, so minus nine over two. Okay, 
Um, let's see if I can have room to work this one completely out. Uh, so 12 minus 2, so that's 10 uh, minus 8 thirds. Uh, let's see, so we already combined that. Uh, this will be negative 18 plus 9, so that's negative 9. If I apply this negative, that'll make it positive 9. And then distribute the negative here, that'll be plus 9 over 2. So the 10 plus 9 is 19. So we've got 19, am I still on, the, okay, good. Minus 8 thirds plus 9 halves. So in order to combine all that, we would need a common denominator, which least common denominator here will be 6. So we can do top and bottom times 6 here, top and bottom times 2 here, and top and bottom times 3 here will give us a single fraction, 6 in the denominator. Let's see. So 6 times 19, so that'd be 60 plus 54, so 144. Is that what it is? 60? Wait, hold on. No. Uh, 60 plus 54 will be 114. Sorry, guys. Okay, uh, 8 times 2, so this is my 16. This is 27. So what do we have? I'm going to combine these guys first. So that'll be uh, positive 13, right? No, positive 11. I don't know what it is. Too many late nights. Uh, yeah, positive 11, and then the 114. So this will be 125 over 6. Hopefully, I prefer to do this kind of thing in the live sessions because you guys can buzz in when I make a arithmetic mistake, but it looks good to me.